Hi, this is Steve, V6WZ. For about 15 years, I've used phase boxes or noise cancelers to eliminate uh, local noise. I've used the uh, NCC1 box shown here from uh, DX Engineering. And I've also used the uh, MFJ1026 uh, uh, phase box. In fact, uh, over the years, I've owned two of these. You know, these boxes really can work extremely well in the right circumstances, but only uh, if properly installed and adjusted. Let me show you how these things work and some of the pitfalls that operators make that sometimes result in disappointment. Let's be clear here, I'm talking only about using these boxes for specific noise cancelling, uh, usually in an urban environment. I'm not talking about antenna phasing or null steering or uh, pattern formation. That's a different discussion altogether. First, let's talk about the theory because knowing how these things work is crucial to getting the proper setup. All of the boxes uh, are essentially the same. Uh, in this case, this is the back of the uh, MFJ box. They have a main antenna, which is usually your main transmit antenna or what your main receive antenna is, an output for the radio, it'll go to the radio, and then a second input for what we'll call a noise or a sense antenna. In the case of, of the uh, NCC1 box, rather than calling it the main and auxiliary antenna, they call it A and B. On the front panel, uh, in the case of the MFJ, we'll have a gain control, uh, for the auxiliary antenna, a gain control for the main antenna, and a phase knob, which will basically control the phase relationship between the two antenna inputs. Uh, in the case of the uh, NCC1, rather than a gain control for the A and B antennas, they have a balance control. Turned one direction, you're all maximum gain on the A antenna. The other direction, maximum gain on the B antenna. And in between uh, is everything in between. So the basic setup, uh, in the case of either of them, uh, in this case I'll be looking at the MFJ, the radio goes to the radio input, the main antenna, in this case I'll say your Yagi goes to the main input, and then there'll be a secondary antenna, I call that the auxiliary antenna, the sense or the noise antenna. Here's how they work for noise cancelling. Alright, in this really old school graphic I got a diagram of your neighbor's house. Well, perhaps he's just installed some, uh, you know, LED lights with a really noisy driver or uh, maybe there's some old arcing halogen lights in there or maybe just some uh, noisy switch mode power supplies. Either way, uh, this house is radiating noise and that noise propagates and ends up uh, impinging on your antenna and uh, covering up all the good DX signals. The key here with all of this is what we're going to do is install another antenna that will also hear... Uh, that same noise. This is what we call the sense antenna. And uh, in this case, in the case of the MFJ box, it's going into the auxiliary port. The buzz buzz signal coming from the neighbor's house uh, is fed into the uh, main input of the phase combiner of the box. And there's, uh, the gain control is able to control the amplitude of the noise. That same noise propagates into the sense antenna and can be controlled by the gain or, in the case of the MSJ, a, uh, a preamp uh, to adjust the gain of that same, uh, same noise. In the case of the NCC1, that's uh, an attenuator ac actually. The first objective uh, is to have the buzz buzz noise to be equal in amplitude on both of the inputs uh, to the phase uh, combiner. Um, in fact, I got some really fancy uh, uh, old school graphics here to add to this. So, uh, in this case, our buzz buzz noise on the sense antenna is shown in red. In black is what we're hearing uh, together with the, the signal, but this is the noise on the uh, main antenna. Our objective here is to get these both the same amplitude, and then what we do is simply adjust the phase until they are exactly 180 degrees out of phase. Of course, basic math and basic physics is the uh, positive and negatives of the peak cancel out and we have no buzz, buzz, growl, growl anymore. We have completely canceled that out. Uh, the key here is to make sure those amplitudes are the same. For example, in this diagram, even if we get them 180 degrees out of phase, if the amplitudes aren't quite the same, uh, we'll still be left with uh, some noise. So that's the reason for the main gain control and the auxiliary gain control is to control the amplitude and the phase is just to adjust them till they're perfectly 180 degrees out of phase. So this is just the theory, but let me show you some tips on adjusting the unit 
some tricks to maximize the noise cancelling success, and some, fit, uh, some of the pitfalls that might lead to disappointment. Tip number one. I think this is perhaps the biggest reason why people end up being disappointed using a noise canceller. They purchase an MFJ 1026 at the local ham fest or flea market, take it home and plug it in and are disappointed because they're not getting any uh, cancellation. Most of the time it's because they don't really understand the theory that I just explained. Nulling will never work if the exact same offending noise uh, is not present on the auxiliary antenna. In other words, the buzz, buzz, growl, growl that you're hearing on your main antenna that you want to eliminate, you must hear that on the auxiliary uh, antenna. Uh, if you don't, uh, don't even try. You're wasting your time. You will never, ever get a, a null. Uh, you must hear the exact same buzzy noise on the auxiliary antenna that you wish to know. A tip number two, related to tip number one, how do we adjust the, uh, the unit? Uh, the first thing we do is turn down the auxiliary antenna gain to zero. So all we're listening to is the main uh, receive antenna. And you'll be listening to your growl, growl, buzz, buzz noise. And you want to take a note of the amplitude of that, perhaps using your S meter or the uh, spectrum display. Uh, step two, we turn the main gain down and turn up the gain uh, on the auxiliary antenna. And what we want to do is be able to hear the exact same buzz buzz growl growl sound I mean the exact same sound you if you don't hear that sound if you don't hear the same noise you're finished you're done full stop there's nowhere to go from there except build another antenna and I'll talk about that in a minute number three then we'll uh, adjust the auxiliary gain to match the amplitude of the offending noise that uh, you recorded in step one on the main in other words you're trying to get that same noise to be the same uh, amplitude Number four, we then turn the main gain back up and adjust the phase for a complete null as good as possible, perhaps fine tuning the auxiliary and main gain to maximize the null. When, when properly adjusted, the null is not subtle. It should be complete, like 100 dB or more. I mean, it will be gone if you have the uh, a proper setup and good sense antennas. Tip number three. Uh, you want to try, if you can, and maximize the signal strength of the offending noise on the auxiliary antenna. Uh, the best way to do this is to build a specific noise antenna right beside the neighbor's house, for example. What you're trying to do here is minimize the need to add gain uh, to the auxiliary antenna input because all that's going to do is add and mix uh, incoherent noise together with your main RX antenna and degrade uh, signal quality. Uh, for example, uh, here's what I actually did, a real life example. A house which was uh, located uh, to the west of me, about four houses down, had a, had a tremendous noise, a real growl. I never did discover what it, where, where it was coming from. Um, but what I did do was go out and walk with my radio, and, and that's how I knew that it was coming from his house. So in this diagram, I'm showing with the yellow line a coax feed that I, I installed. It's an RG58 piece of coax that I buried along the gravel along this pathway. I have a pathway behind the house, so I had a stealth coax feed going to the back of my neighbor's house, and I installed a high impedance uh, broadband uh, uh, vertical antenna. I basically stapled a piece of wire to the uh, to the back of his uh, fence, uh, which provided what I called my noise antenna. Now, in this instance, the noise was extremely loud uh, on the auxiliary antenna, and I was able to keep the gain low, so I wasn't introducing any other aberrant noise, and uh, was able to get a complete null on uh, both 40, 80, and 160 meters. This is a picture of the 1026 uh, MFJ noise canceller, and it comes with this uh, built-in whip antenna. So what you do is you unscrew that antenna and you throw it in the garbage. Perhaps what you'll do is put it in your junk box and use it for some other project. I mean, this is particularly useless unless perhaps you have a noise right in the shack. But if you think that all you can do is use this, um, uh, I, I think it would be very, very rare to find a situation where that antenna would be adequate uh, for a noise antenna. A tip number four, this is somewhat related to the other tips, that is perhaps consider building multiple uh, noise or auxiliary antennas for different bands and different noise sources, perhaps for different locations for different noises. 
This is an example of what I did uh, in my uh, city QTH. I had a green space behind the house and I installed a number of various antennas, some high impedance vertical arrays, individual verticals. I had some short beverage antennas as well as that uh, sense antenna stapled to my neighbor's uh, back fence. What I did has had a, a switching matrix shown here, the NCC ones on the bottom and a, and a series of switches and boxes where I was able to route any one antenna to become the noise antenna on the noise canceller. In other words, if I had an offending noise, I would go search for it on any one of those other antennas and then route it to be my noise source to achieve canceling. Okay, what about limitations uh, of, the, uh, of these devices? You know, these noise cancelers work uh, really uh, well and are best for ground wave point sources. You know, think local noise, one noise source at a time, just like I showed your neighbor's house. Um, Power lines uh, with, uh, you know, are, are a common problem, and I'm not going to say that power line no noise is impossible to null with these boxes, but because that noise is spatially distributed, uh, you know, spatially distributed and being conducted uh, along the lines, the power lines often, it can be difficult to get a complete null simply because that spatial distribution is going to upset the uh, absolute phase uh, when you're trying to null it. Uh, one other thing to be aware of when using this with a Yagi as your main antenna, which I did, especially my 40 and 80 meter Yagis, when I would uh, rotate the Yagi, I had to readjust uh, the noise uh, null, usually the gain, because the relative gain would change by rotating the Yagi. So all it required was some readjustment of the gain and the phase sometimes. Skywave conducted noise uh, truly can be difficult to know completely. Not impossible, but it can be difficult. You know, really, you know, this device really isn't made for eliminating distant QRN. There's too much phase distortion. I mean, you can try, but there are other antenna approaches to, uh, to, to, to work with that. So is it the NCC1 or the MFJ1026? As I say, I have used both. Uh, you know, the NCC1, or whatever the latest model is, you know, is a very robust and well-built unit, and it does have a very low noise floor, or a lower noise floor. However, uh, you know, I'm convinced, because I've used it, and uh, that in most urban and city locations, the MFJ unit is going to be more than adequate and will null noises uh, just as deeply as the NCC1. The slightly higher noise uh, floor, I don't think, is likely to be even noticed uh, most of the time. Okay guys, don't be afraid to use one of these noise cancelers. Uh, I've used them for years and they really, really can be effective at eliminating the many noises that we have in our uh, city environment uh, these days. You know, go uh, find out where the noises are coming from, build an antenna, go build some kind of easy, cheap uh, loop or some kind of stealth antenna to get a noise uh, signal into your shack and use it to null it out on your main antenna. You know, it really uh, can work. Uh, anyway, 73, I uh, hope this helped you a little bit, and don't hesitate to visit my YouTube channel. I have a number of other videos there on uh, some of my uh, low-band receive systems. 73, Steve, V6WZ.